Let's do it. Let's do it. You too, huh? Where's everyone else? My name is Walter Hartwell White. I live at 308 Negra Arroyo Lane, Albuquerque, New Mexico, 87104. This is my confession. If you're watching this tape, I'm probably dead. <laughs> Phineas and Ferb get busted is the 45th episode of season 1. The episode begins with Phineas looking for a missing boat for the control tower they build for the flying car in the backyard. Candace sees this and hopes her mom will be home in time to finally catch the boys and one of the crazy schemes they do when she's not around. Hi mom, check it out. The flying car of the future today. Is that my car? Too. Linda is furious and tells the boys that they're in a lot of trouble. Phineas explains that they do this sort of thing every day. Candace tells her mom that she's been trying to tell her that this happens all the time, but she never listens. How dare you do all this without permission? But all our building permits are in order. I mean, my permission. This morning I asked you if we could modify our car to make it fly. I was talking about your toy car. How could you possibly think I meant my station wagon? You are in so much trouble, young man. But we do this sort of thing every day. What? See, Mom, I told you. But you never listened. Linda apologizes to Candace for never believing her and gives her a hug. Oh, Candace. All the times I called you delusional and mocked you to my friends behind your back. All those journals I filled with an eye towards stand-up comedy. But you were telling the truth. I'm so sorry. You're the best daughter any mother could dream of having. Finally, you realize that! Afterwards, Lawrence, the dad, appears and asks what's going on. Linda explains the situation, and Candace asks her parents how they're going to punish them, and even give them a couple of ideas. Lawrence agrees that they need to be punished, but thinks they should go easy on them, since no harm has been done. Well, until this happens... Hey, look, Ferb. Here's bolt number 473. I hope that wasn't important. Well, at least the self-parking works. <laughs> the boys are sent to reformatory school. Baljeet is also there because he got kicked out of summer school because his grades were too high. Baljeet, what are you doing here? Well, I got kicked out of summer school because my grades were too high. But then I heard about this place. Sure, they break you down and strip you of your identity, but school is school. Weird, buddy. You're weird. When Phineas and Far arrived at the school, they sit on a conveyor line to get their haircuts by the warden. I was too excited to wait. I shaved last night. Just call me Bald Jeet. What the fuck? All the students line up against their bunkers while the warden explains that they're here because their parents are worried about them. He also explains that he thinks the main root of a child's problem is their giant imagination and he wants to destroy their enthusiasm. Our goal at this school is to crush the dangerous elements inside you and replace them with structure order, discipline, and conformity. After seeing the boys create a ferris wheel bunk bed, the warden decides to punish them by making them clean the restroom with a toothbrush and tortures them even more using cruel and unusual punishments. The book was so much better. Back at home, Candace seems to be missing her brothers, and a flashback sequence starts to play of the fond memories she shared with them. Afterwards, Candace turns the TV on to the Morty Williams show, and he's covering the reform school that Phineas and Ferb is attending. Morty explains that the school uses brutal methods of teaching in order to reprogram the kid's personality. After realizing what has happened, Candace, with the help of Jeremy, tried to bust her brothers out of school. While this is happening, her mom and dad decided that they were too hard on Phineas and Ferb, and thinks everything was just a big misunderstanding. Since Phineas and Ferb were under the impression that they had their parents' permission, when they do crazy schemes. But as soon as they open up the garage, they notice that their modified car is gone. Hey! Maybe we should walk the rest of the way. 
Afterwards, a montage plays of the reformatory students walking in an organized line and doing hard manual labor outside the school. And every time Phineas and Ferb step out of the line, they get locked inside a middle box. Who won't let me color outside of the lines? Got these chains on me, and they're dragging me down. Got these chains on me. Sound. The boys and the warden are now in a room with tools laid on the table. And every time Phineas thinks of an idea, the warden shoots them with a mechanized water bottle machine. Hey, Ferb, I know what we're gonna do today. No! Hey, Ferb, I know what we're gonna do no. today. No! Hey! No! Herb, no! I, no! Uh, no! 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 Hey, <laughs> Yes, I've finally broken them. Candace and Jeremy finally arrive at the school, and after many failed attempts on trying to get in, they were able to this time by dressing up as Morty Williams and a cameraman and fool the warden into thinking that he was going to be on TV. We're doing a follow-up show on Phineas Flynn and Ferb Fletcher. My biggest success stories right this way. Once inside, Candace is reunited with her brothers and tells them that she's here to rescue them, but it seems that their spirit has been broken and they don't have any desire to escape. Candace tricks the warden into getting himself locked inside of a closet and then snatches her brothers up and runs out to school. Action. Come on, guys, we can escape now! Escaping is wrong and wrongness is bad. Oh, we don't have time for this! Grab him! Why is Morty Williams running off with our children? I don't know. The warden activates the alarm, and a chase scene happens. Those zombified brats are making me one rich. It's Morty Williams! Get him! It's Morty Williams! Get him! Oh, 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 oh. Hey, wait a minute. Look, they tricked us! Get it's Morty Williams! Get him! Kenneth and the others return to the damaged car, and she asks the boys to fix it, but they refuse because that's irresponsible. And the car falls off the cliff after Kenneth takes the toolbox out. Candace tells her brothers that she's sorry and has always secretly been proud of them. Phineas and Ferb are now back to their regular selves, but it's too late. The warden has already caught up to them. Out of nowhere, a giant robotic spider emerges from the ground with Perry and Dr. Doofusmerts fighting over the controls. They briefly tangle before Perry pulls the lever on the control panel and drives the spider back into the ground, knocking the warden over the cliff in the process. Afterwards, there are weird scenes of Phineas and Ferb juggling corn dogs, and her parents are now a marionette being controlled by Balji. It turns out the whole thing was just a dream, but not by Candace, but instead by Perry. Oh, hey, Perry. What's wrong, boy? You sounded like you were having a bad dream. It's okay now. Go back to sleep. Even though this episode was just a dream, it was pretty cool to see what could probably happen if Phineas and Ferb ever got caught by their parents. Although I do think sending them to a school that crushes their creativity and spirit might be a bit too much. Don't you eyeball me! How did you feel about this episode? Did you like this episode or did you think it was a little too dark? Let me know in the comment section down below. I'm Tsunami. Thanks for watching. No, Ferb, he's right. That was a little funky.